Hello and welcome. This time we look a little bit deeper into a throttle point. So in a point where we locally will close the area or like an orifice for instance. Yeah? We locally will narrow the stream down yeah? to break it, yeah? to make it slower, yeah? to reduce the flow through the pipe, something like this. Yeah? We want to have a look what is happening there. Okay. It's often used in hydraulic systems that we can adjust the speed of a certain cylinder or something like this, that there is a certain flow rushing in uh, and the speed of the cylinder is then defined. Good, so maybe a little bit drawing. Here we are going down. And then we're going up again. How these transitions are formed. The thing is, usually we do have here lamina streaming, I have said. So there's this lamina type. And here we do have more speed, I said. And when we narrow down things, they have speed. So here we have turbulence. We have turbulence streaming inside, huh? and then it will go back to lamina here again. Huh? Lamina, turbulent lamina. These are the stream types. Okay. What will happen to the pressure if we have at this point the pressure eh? and also here this is the length eh? here we are getting turbulent somewhere eh? here we will then reach again lamina eh? if we would have a pipe simply running through we would start at a certain pressure yeah, and we'll make this blue now. Uh, we would start at a certain pressure, and this will drop. We have said because of the friction, we have a pressure loss. This would be if we do not have this narrow part, this narrow passage here. However, we do have this narrow passage here. This means here we're speeding up. The pressure will decrease. We expect this, yeah? because energy, the, the speed is increased, so the pressure must drop. Yeah? Here the pressure is down, yeah? and then it will, will come back up again, yeah? however, not as high as before. We will have a certain pressure loss here. We will have a certain pressure loss at the throttle point. We are losing energy. Where is this energy going? Heat. And really, if you if you have an orifice built in or something like this, or you if you have a throttle point in your system and you touch it, this throttle point is warm. You can feel it. Nice. The pipes left and right are cold. And in the middle where the, 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 the throttle point is, warm. How big is this delta P? Yeah? We said, when, when we have talked about friction, yeah? when we talked about friction, we used this formula here, this delta P yeah? equals, I used then this zeta, yeah? multiplied by rho half V squared. Yeah. We've used this. Let's say that the volume flow is Q, yeah. also sometimes written as V point. Yeah. This is the area multiplied by the velocity. Okay. Area multiplied by the velocity. This is the volume flow. Square meters, meters per second, cubic meters per second. Okay. So, Q squared 
is a squared, v squared, and v squared is uh, q squared, a squared, divided by a squared. We put this here in, delta p is zeta rho half multiplied q squared divided by a squared. Okay, we want to have a correlation between q and and the, the, the pressure drop. So this pressure drop, now let's bring this to the other side. We have then q squared equals 1 divided by zeta yeah, multiplied by a squared multiplied by 2 delta p divided by rho, the density. Yeah. Now I make square root. This is square root zeta. Let's make it a bit a and square root two. This here is usually called alpha. It's the streaming coefficient. So we have here alpha a that's it. That's it. So this is the area of the nozzle here. Here, this is A. The area of the nozzle. Nozzle. Of this orifice or whatever. Small area. This is how the volume flow and the pressure is depending on each other. If we are, I mean, this is constant, the density is constant, alpha is constant. So, usually Q is proportional to the square root of the pressure drop, or the pressure drop is proportional to Q squared. Okay? This is in case of laminar streaming. Ah, not laminar streaming, of turbulent streaming. <laughs> in laminar streaming, it's different. In laminar streaming, it's different, because in laminar streaming, the pressure drop is proportional to, to the volume flow. That's actually it, because I can show you. I was not aware of this also, that these all things bind together, but however, discussion with a dear dear colleague, uh, we figured this, this out in detail, so I will show you. I use the same formula here. Delta P equals zeta rho half V squared. We set this zeta for a tube. This zeta for a tube is nothing else than lambda, length of the tube, diameter of the tube, and the rest is the same. And we said in case of laminar streaming, in case of laminar streaming, this lambda equals uh, 64 divided by the Reynolds number, okay, and the Reynolds number, the Reynolds number was, uh, I have to look, <laughs> somewhere in, ah, there, yeah, the velocity multiplied by the diameter divided by the viscosity, okay, now I put this in, this means lambda is 64 times Viscosity divided by velocity and diameter. Okay. These two things together produce this. Okay. Now I put this in here. This means the pressure drop is lambda 64 nu velocity diameter and now this L diameter rho half v squared. And suddenly, puck, puck, this v is no longer squared. Yeah? I have here 64 halves is 32 nu d squared multiplied by L yeah? rho half v. Suddenly, the pressure drop is linear to the velocity. Yeah? 
This is in case of laminar streaming. And this is why here we do have laminar streaming. So we drop the pressure proportional because of course it's still this V is still Q divided by A. So it's 32 nu d squared L rho half and here we have Q divided by A. If I use here R instead of D, I have here 4. Yeah, so yeah, 32 nu. It's then 4 R squared L rho half. Ah, no, this half. Ooh, this half is gone. I've used it here. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Q divided by A. The A is R squared P pi. P pi, of course. Yeah. Apple pi. 32 divided by 4 is 8. Yeah. So we have 8 nu divided by R the fourth pi. Then there is an L. Then there is still a rho. And there is this Q. Ma. We shrink it. Ah, nu multiplied by rho is the other type of viscosity. It's kinematic static viscosity. And then we have written here A nu L R the fourth B multiplied by Q. So this is a constant factor. Yeah? And Q and P are linear. You can think about this. Yeah. Rewatch the video. Uh, it's a proportional factor in laminar case. Yeah. Laminar case is a proportional factor. We are dropping proportional to the flow. And here in this area, it's turbulent. We are dropping proportional to the flow squared. Yeah. So we're dropping more. Yeah, and this is exactly this is exactly the remaining pressure loss. Yeah. That's the thing which is happening at a narrow position in the tube. Yeah. The thing is getting hot, let's say, it, yeah, and we there is a certain pressure loss at this orifice, nozzle, throttle point, however you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, That's it. Just, just uh, hydrodynamics. Like I said, if you're going really into details of this in your mechanics lessons, yeah. here that's application actually. Just want to show you that this is exactly the same like you learned there, your other course. Good. Yeah. For this video, I think that's it. Next time we then talk about, now we have laid the ground rules. Yeah. Now we said we know the basics, yeah. we know how those things work together. Next time we're talking about the used liquids. Yeah. What liquids are we using to transfer our energy? What are the tasks of the liquid and what specific uh, properties they need to have to fulfill this task, what we want. Yeah? If a, an ideal liquid is possible or not, we will see it in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.